Dispensers are amongst the most annoying items to craft in Minecraft. Because the bow at the center of the recipe is non-stackable, you can only craft them one by one, making it painfully slow when you need a bunch of them. In this video, I will present a concept for a fully automated farm. It generates ready-to-use dispensers from scratch using a custom bot. The bot itself is open source, as well as the library it's built with. Pre-compiled binaries and a world download are also available if you want to test it yourself. All the links can be found in the video description just below the like and subscribe buttons. Let's forget the automation part for a moment and start with the basics. To craft a dispenser, you need redstone, cobblestone and bowstone. Redstone is the easiest part to get as you can buy it directly from a cleric for emeralds. It's the same thing for the bow, using this time a fletcher. Unfortunately, you cannot buy cobblestone from villagers, but it's easy to generate stone from lava and water, and then later you can mine it using a pickaxe. And toolsmiths are selling pickaxes, so basically it means that if you have a stone generator and a few villagers, you can convert emeralds into dispensers. So all we need now is to get our hands on some emeralds. There are many ways to get them, the fastest being of course using red mechanics. But in this concept form example, we'll keep things simple and also use the villagers as emerald sources. Specifically, we are using four different trades. First, we are using a zombie spawner, so we can collect rotten flesh and sell them to a cleric. Another spawner creates skeletons that drop bones. They can be later crafted into bone meal and then white dyes to be sold to a shepherd. And finally, we also use some crops to grow carrots and potatoes to get emeralds from farmers. So now, with all this item collection and trading, we have everything we need to craft the dispensers. Let's see how we automate it using the bot. Botcraft, the library used to program the bot, already has some base actions available. There are actions like mine a block, buy an item from a villager, craft something, etc. etc. What we need to do if we want to create a bot behavior is organizing these actions into a consistent sequence that leads to the right final results. The bot actions are organized using what we call a behavior tree. Even if it looks complicated, it's actually not that hard to follow. The bot reads the tree from left to right and from top to bottom. The nodes at the end of the branches are actions that are executed while the intermediary nodes are used to control the flow in the tree. They can be used, for example, to enable or disable parts of the tree based on the context. When an action is performed, it can either return success or failure. Depending on the result, the parent nodes will behave differently. If we zoom in, we can see here what happens in details. The first action is just a check to see if it's day or night. If it's day, it will fail and the parent will skip the next actions that are used to go to sleep. However, if it's night, the check action succeeds and then the sleep part of the tree are performed, resulting in the bot going next to the bed and skipping the night. This is how the tree is built, assembling smaller pieces like that together, a bit like a Lego set. The resulting tree is this big structure that can be split into smaller parts for easier explanations. The first part is an initialization one. It only runs the first time just after the bot has connected to the server. It scans the surroundings to find points of interest. It allows the bot to generalize to similar but different forms. For example, it doesn't look for rotten flesh in a chest at specific coordinates, but instead it just looks for an orange shulker box and assumes rotten flesh will be collected there. So if your farm is configured a bit differently, the same code still works. Then there is the emerald gathering subtree. We can easily see the four emerald sources we talked about earlier in the video. First, we start with the bones to bone meal to white dyes uh, subtree, then uh, the rotten flesh one. Note that if we don't have enough white dyes or rotten flesh to get emeralds, we simply keep them in the inventory until the next iteration of the tree. And then we have two very similar trees to collect and sell potatoes and carrots. After that, there are a few simple tasks to do some cleaning to ensure the bot can run indefinitely without issues. Like, for example, if we have some poisonous potatoes in the inventory, they will be destroyed using a cactus. 
Same thing for arrows coming from skeletons that we don't use for any purpose, so we need to destroy them to ensure they don't fill up the inventory. Then comes the sleep tree we already saw before. It's not mandatory, as the farm doesn't require the time to work, but it will speed up how often villagers refresh their trades, ensuring they are not locked after multiple trades. For the food and eat part of the tree, we could use some of the carrots and potatoes, but instead we use a few emeralds now and then to buy better quality golden carrots that last longer. I'm not sure it's worth it, but it's important to have a proper meal, even for bots, so we do it anyway. With the next parts of the tree, we enter the real dispenser stuff. With a subtree to buy a bow from the Fletcher and the next one to buy redstone. Here, we also have a check of the number of emeralds we already have in the inventory, because if we don't have enough, there is no need to continue and we can exit the tree iteration early to restart from the top and gather more emeralds before continuing. Then, there is a similar subtree to mine cobblestone, with the first part ensuring we have a pickaxe, and then, once it's bought from a toolsmith, we can eat a node block to trigger the stone generator and mine 7 cobblestone blocks. The last part of the tree is the dispenser crafting part. The bot first goes next to the crafting table, then interacts with it to open the interface, then puts the correct items in the slots and crafts the dispenser. Once it's done, it goes next to the red shulker box that is used as output of the form. If the shulker box is full, then the bot stops by stopping the tree loop after this current iteration. Now, let's follow the bot for a full run of the wall tree. For some steps, like trading, it's quite hard to see what's happening as everything is done very quickly, but we can also track the progress in the tree. And it goes on and on and on until either the output is completely full or we stop the bot. Thank you for watching until the end. I hope you liked this video. I'm not sure I will make regular content on this channel, but in case I do, make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss it. If you have any questions, you can use the comment section below or you can join the Botcraft community Discord server. The link is in the description.